They're not the sights and sounds usually associated with Rwanda. But these women are rejoicing in their nation's rebirth, one they've helped bring about. When I walk on the streets right now of Rwanda, I say, I have a country. Women like Joy and Gutse are weaving Rwanda back together, quite literally. As the weavers and women of Rwanda, we have taught the country to move beyond hatred. But consider how hard it must be to move beyond one of the most intensive killing campaigns in human history. In an ethnic cleansing between April and July 1994, Hutu citizens and militias killed an estimated 800,000 of their Tutsi neighbors and sympathizers. Women were raped, children mutilated, and men massacred. After the genocide, women outnumbered men 70 to 30. I see an opportunity to empower the women of Rwanda. Willa Shalit, an accomplished artist and producer, first visited the tiny African country in 2003 and discovered Rwanda's widows had a unique skill set, one she believed they could parlay into profit. You can have ideas about change, but if women don't have money in their hands, they have no power. Shala thought there was a market for these handcrafted baskets in the United States. And they're beautiful. I mean, they blew me away. And it was either keen business savvy or naivete that brought her to the doorstep of one of the largest retailers in the country. And I was just prepared to make a donation. And, and uh, she says, no, 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 we don't want a donation. We want a business. It's underneath this grove of trees that these women first got together to weave baskets after the genocide. Some of their husbands were murdered, others were the murderers. But 15 years later, they have led the way in economic recovery and reconciliation. Dorisel Huimana's husband and father-in-law were killed during the genocide. And now you're weaving next to the women whose husbands were the perpetrators of some of these crimes. We sat together and decided we need to move on. We realized we cannot always be angry at each other. We have to weave. We have to make our lives better. And they have. In 2005, the year the partnership with Macy's began, 1,400 baskets were sold in the U.S. Last year, they sold 40,000. What I earn helps me to take myself out of poverty. Today I can buy a dress, I can feed my children. What they earn seems minuscule, between three and four dollars a day. But it's more than double the national average, making these women less dependent on the 150 million dollars of directed aid the U.S. provided this year. So you put that money in women's hands and they have complete self-determination to change a society the way they think it should be changed, not the way some outsider thinks it should be changed. What's changed is these weavers are now breadwinners, homeowners, investors, even friends. Can women in other countries use this business model? If a woman believes in something, they do it. And I can see this model can work anywhere. You can transfer it to anywhere, but you have to use women. I've messed it up. These women who weave have bridged the divide between tribes, sexes, and cultures. And they've demonstrated that goodwill can also be good business. Dave Price, CBS News, Kigali, Rwanda.